This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, we're still looking at the evaluation of uh, acquisitions, mergers. Uh, and in the last lecture, I was talking about the free cash flow approach. Two different ways of arriving at the free cash flow. But it was discounting at a relevant cost of capital. And the question is... What actual rate are we going to use for the discounting? And there are really three possibilities, and it depends on exactly what's happening. And I've put them down here on the next page in bold. And they should all make sense as we go through. There are three possibilities. The first one says, if the business risk of the company being acquired is the same as that of the acquiring company. So there's no change in business risk. So perhaps we're an oil company. We're buying an oil company. Same level of risk. We're a telephone company. We're buying a telephone company. Same level of risk. In addition, There's little or no change in the gearing as a result. Well, in that case, if there's no change in risk, business risk or gearing risk, the weighted average cost of capital won't change. We discount at the existing weighted average cost of capital of the predator, the acquiring company. Now, I'm not going to illustrate that. We know how to discount, you know how to calculate weighted average cost of capital. But that, in fact, is extremely unlikely. Could happen. It's down to reading carefully. But it is unlikely. You know, um, we're a shipbuilder, we're an oil company, you know, the other company might not be an oil company, a different level of business risk. And maybe we're raising uh, debt in order to finance the acquisition, the gearing changes. And I did say when we revised calculations of weighted average, it was only valid, provided no change in business risk, no change in gearing. So there's rule number one, but unlikely to be relevant. Uh, incidentally, these three types I'm mentioning, they used to be referred to as type one acquisitions, type two acquisitions, type three. This is all they were. Um, and you may come across those names if you're using an old book, textbook or whatever. Uh, but the examiner said several years ago, He's not going to refer to them as type 1, type 2, type 3. That's irrelevant. But just be aware of what we do in each situation. The next, I said that well, that happening is unlikely. The next one, though, certainly could happen. It's where the business risk is different. So, we're an oil company, we're taking over another company, which is a telephone company, a completely different level of business risk. But, no change in the gearing. So, there's a second possible situation. And I've written the steps down... Uh, below, but to illustrate the steps, look at example three, uh, and you will see it's something we have done before effectively. It's a bit of revision. Example three APLC is a company with a gearing ratio, debt to equity of 0.4. And sorry, forgive me, I'm looking for my formula sheet here. Oh, 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 oh. Can't find it. Here it is. 
sorry, you can see why in a second. Uh, it's a company with a gearing ratio of debt to equity of 0.4. Shares in A PLC have a beta of 1.48. They're considering acquiring another company, B PLC, and shares in B PLC have a beta of 1.8. And B PLC has a gearing ratio of debt to equity of 0.2. Shares have different betas, partly obviously because they're different levels of gearing. Uh, partly, though, they are potentially different businesses. A is raising more debt in order partly to, uh, to partly finance the acquisition, but the overall gearing ratio is not expected to change substantially. A PLC has a cost of debt of 7%. Uh, the market return is 15%. The risk-free rate is 8. Before anybody uh, shouts, how can the cost of debt be lower than the risk-free rate? Remember, the cost of debt is after tax relief. The return to investors will be more than um, 7%. It will be more than risk-free rate of 8. Anyway, it says, when we come to discount, what discount rate should be applied to the free cash flows of B in order to arrive at a value of B. Well, we did do this earlier, but it is revision. Do watch me carefully. The first thing we have to do, we're acquiring B, and of course, all right, they are currently geared, but once you've acquired them, it's going to be our gearing ratio. And so the first thing we need to do is to calculate the pure business risk of B to take out their existing gearing. The equity beta is 1.8. We need the asset beta to get the measure of the pure business risk in the company we're taking over. Uh, and so, well, I found my formula sheet, <laughs> and we've had the formula before. It's VE over BE plus VD1 minus T times beta equity. And remember, the rest of the formula vanishes. For this formula alone, we always assume debt is risk-free, beta zero. Well, I'm trying to find the asset beta of BPLC. And so it's BPLC's gearing that we need to use in this formula. And how have we been given? Debt to equity. So as far as B is concerned, for every 100 equity, the debt is 20. And so let's apply the formula. Equity 100 over 100 plus... 20 times, the tax rate's 25%, so 1 minus 2.75, times the equity beta, the beta in B is 1.8, and therefore the asset beta of the company we're acquiring is 1.56. If you want to go further, fine. I'm not worried about a bit of rounding. It's 1.565. Oh, all right, I'll do 1.565, but we could go on and on. But there is the asset beta, the measure of the riskiness of the company we're buying. Now then, if we're using this free cash flow method, we'd get the free cash flows, but we have to decide what discount rate we're going to use. We know how risky the actual company we're buying is. But of course, there's gearing. Um, we, are, we are currently geared. A is currently geared. And the gearing's not going to be going to change. So, effectively, this new project, this new company, will have the same level of gearing. And so we need to work out a weighted average cost of capital for 
in a sense, this new project. It just happens that the new project is another company. And so now we need to work the other way around. For A, we know A's gearing. Uh, A's gearing is 0.4, so if equity is 100, debt is 40. I want to work out a weighted average cost of capital for this project that we're investing in, this company we're investing in. And so I need to work out a cost of equity, a cost of debt. How am I going to work out the cost of equity? We need to work out a beta, an equity beta. We know the asset beta for this company. The equity beta, well, we know the gearing that's going to be applied. So we'll use the formula again. The asset beta is uh, VE over VE plus VD1 minus T times the equity beta. Well, we know the asset beta is 1.565. Uh, the gearing, equity is 100 over 100 plus 40 times 1 minus T times equity beta. And so uh, the equity beta multiply divide we get an equity beta of 1.565 times 130 divided by 100 of 2.0345. So that's the beta for the shareholders' money being invested in this project, this company, with this level of gearing. And so what cost of equity is required? The normal capital asset formula, the risk-free rate 8% plus beta uh, times the market premium, 15 is against 8 and so the return required by shareholders but on shareholders' money in this project, in this company, is 7 times 2.0345 plus 8, 22.24%. Uh, so part of the money for this new company is coming from shareholders and they'll need 22%. Part of it, though, is coming from debt. And what's the cost of debt? Uh, we're told directly it's 7%. If you're given it as a cost, it's already after tax relief. And therefore, what's the weighted average cost of capital that's applicable to this acquisition, this project, this company? We're keeping the same gearing in A as we've currently got. Therefore, the gearing being used for the acquisition will be the same. And what was it? Out of a total of 140, 100 was equity, 40 was debt. So the proportions, 100 over 140 times the equity, plus 40 over 140 times the debt, gives me a weighted average cost of capital of 17.89%. I get 17.89%. And so there is our second situation the gearing stayed the same, but the business risk is different. We've had to ungear and gear the beta. But as a result, <coughs> we'd get our free cash flows in the ways I explained earlier. We discount at 17.89. Uh, now, in fact, he wouldn't expect you to discount at a funny rate in the exam. 
Uh, you'd write in your working 70.89, but it would be perfectly acceptable to discount at 18% and use the tables. All right, finally, or finally for this lecture, I said there were three situations. If the business and gearing risks don't change, use the existing weighted average. If the business risk changes, but the gearing doesn't, gear and gear the beta, and then work out a new weighted average. Finally, though, and you'll see why I'm not actually going to do any numbers on it, the third situation is if the business risk changes, We're currently an oil company, we're buying a telephone company, different business risk. And the gearing changes. So whatever our current gearing is, we're going to raise more finance for the acquisition. And as a result, there'll be a big change in the gearing. Well, the reason I'm not going to do an example here is because it's only a few lectures ago that we actually dealt with this. I did say, I was talking about projects, but the same acquire, uh, applies when you're buying a company. It's like a new project. I said if there's a major change in gearing, we use, or we take, an adjusted present value approach. You calculate the MPV as though we were financing the acquisition entirely from equity and you add on the tax benefit of any debt raised. And so it's an adjusted present value approach. And as I said, I am not going to repeat that because it wasn't that long ago. If you've forgotten adjusted present value, uh, have a look back at the relevant chapter. If you're worried about applying it for an acquisition, there is, really is no extra problem, but if you're worried about applying it, as I've said, I do work through a few past question ones. Uh, and you will see uh, I am using adjusted present value. Okay, um, nearly there, but not yet there yet. That was free cash flow. Uh, instead of free cash flow to the firm, there is an alternative, which I'll explain in the next lecture.